Okay, shall we start, Camelia? Okay, let's go. So everybody can hear me? Yes. Okay. So hello, everyone. Thank you for your participation in our first webinar. Uh, today, our webinar uh, will focus on the challenges and opportunities uh, offered by small-scale CSP technology. To discuss this, uh, three partners uh, of the Polyfem project uh, will successively uh, present the issues surrounding this technology that has been developed within the framework of this project. The presentation will be followed by a question and answer session of 20 minutes, approximately, uh, where the speakers will be able to respond all your demands. Uh, if we do not have the time to answer them, uh, we commit ourselves to answer them in a blog article that will be published uh, on our website soon. And it will also contain the replay of the webinar that we are organizing now. And to start this webinar, uh, we would like to show you a short video presentation of the project to give you the context and the uh, key elements about the project and uh, what are we going to uh, speak about. So I will play the video. Uh, can you see all the video? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. While Europe is driving toward the energy transition, many eyes are focused on sun power technology. And one of the most promising sources of green energy comes from the concentrated solar power technologies, also known as CSP, which concentrates sunlight by mirrors or lenses and turn it into thermal energy. The Polyfem project aims to increase the performance of small-scale concentrated solar power plants and their flexibility to generate power on demand. To this end, Polyfem develops a new technology, an innovative solar-driven microgas turbine, which would help meet the variable energy demand in the region. But how does it work? To do so, Polyfem combines two thermodynamic cycles, an upper air breaking cycle and a lower organic ranking cycle. ORC. The project extends this technology by integrating an advanced pressurized air solar receiver technology, high temperature solar receiver in the top cycle, and an innovative low cost thermal energy storage unit between the two cycles. Polyfen will build a 60 kilowatt prototype plant with a 1.3 megawatt hour thermal storage unit, which will be tested at the Chemist Solar Tower in Tagazan, France. It will also establish the guidelines for the commercial deployment of this technology in the market. As a result, Polyfem technology will be able to generate power on demand, particularly in remote areas, but also heating and cooling of low-type family dwellings, and water dissemination for small communities in arid regions, reducing CO2 emissions, and contributing to sustainable agricultural and food production. Polyfem is the result of a four-year collaboration between four research centers and five private companies from four European countries. The support of the Horizon 2020 program for research and innovation. For more information about our forthcoming activities, visit our website and social media. So this short video presents to you uh, uh, the key elements of uh, our project. And I will let now the floor to Alain Ferrier, who's uh, working from the CNRS, and he will present to you uh, a little introduction uh, speech because he's the coordinator of the project. So Alain, the floor is yours. Thank you, Camelia. So can you see my screen? I've shared my presentation. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, well, so I am Alain Ferrier. I'm the coordinator of this project, and working for I'm working for the CNRS, which is the French uh, National Center for Scientific Research. My laboratory is in the Pyrenees, in the south of France. Uh, so I will briefly briefly introduce you to the CSP technologies, 
and and make a focus at the end of the presentation on the on the project so polyfem you you already had a, a snapshot on on this project with the video I will enter into more details at the end of the presentation um, the first part will be how how CSP addresses intermit intermittency issues and we'll have also a, a share of ideas about the the penetration of the market by CSP. And at the end, we'll see how Polyfilm can address these, these issues also. So the, the first uh, uh, remark is that the variable renewables cannot meet the demand at any time. So you can see here that with solar energy and we have almost the same pattern with wind, uh, we, we, we cannot fit or fit to the load curve at any time. We have a, a solar power generation during the day, but in the early morning and late evening, uh, we, we, we cannot provide uh, electricity. So the, one, one big question is how can we mitigate this uh, uh, drawback? Uh, we need the storage, of course, and, and all the technologies are not suited for, for storage. Alan, excuse me, yes. Alan. Um, I don't know. I don't see the right presentation. I think is it the same for everybody? Yes, the slides are not moving. Allah. The slides are not moving. No. Okay. So. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. So we are. We are. You are still on the on the title uh, yes. uh, slide. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We don't see the presentation mode, but the editing oh. mode. We see just the first slide. Yes, I, I understand. So what can I do? Maybe you are sharing the wrong screen. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you yes. should Let me try again. Inside. I think it will be easier. Let me try this. I think it's uh, it's blocked. Oh, it's sorry. I'm sorry. So, okay. Do you want me to share your presentation and uh, so that? I... Yes, please. Okay. You can do it. Can you all see my screen now? Okay. If I do that there now, is it still okay? Yes. Okay now. Okay, perfect. Just tell me, Alan, when you need me to. Yes, please. So go to the next slide. Okay, so that was the summary, and then the next slide was, was about the yes, variable renewables, and then the next slide is how can we manage with this? Okay, now the next slide is, okay, now, um, how CSP addresses the intermittency issue. So what you can see here is the rather complex uh, conversion chain with a CSP system. So starting from the sun, then we have the concentrating system on the left side, and uh, uh, it provides a, a concentrated light or radiation to the solar receiver where light is converted into heat. And then this heat, before it is transferred to the thermodynamic conversion system, which is generally a rotating uh, engine like turbine, uh, the heat can be, can be stored uh, using a storage system or it can also be created by a backup resource, which is generally from uh, fossil fuel, or it, it might be also biomass. And, and it provides a flexibility to the system because then the th thermodynamic conversion system will produce power uh, at a, a, a flat uh, uh, 
power range and under demand. So it means that the, the CSP, the, 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 the key word is that CSP provides dispatchable and firm capacity. Next slide. Okay, so the CSP technologies existing today uh, basically are uh, uh, um, based on, on, uh, on four different uh, concentrating options. Uh, we have the linear frontal system on the, on the top left of the, of the schemes, uh, where we have a fixed uh, focus linear absorber tube. Uh, and, and the, and the uh, solar energies and solar radiation is concentrated on this tube uh, with moving mirrors, which are almost flat, but exactly slightly curved mirrors, uh, linearly arranged um, close to the ground, rotating with the, the speed of the uh, movement of the, of, the, of, the, of the sun in the sky. And we have the same or similar system with the... Uh, uh, um, a moving uh, uh, absorbing tube at the focus of uh, what we call a parabolic trough system on the, on the top right of the, of the figure. Uh, and, and then, and then the, the, the light is concentrated onto this uh, linear tube uh, by parabolic mirrors, which are also rotating along one axis uh, along with the, the speed of the, of the movement of the, of the sun in the sky. Those two systems uh, have the advantage of being modular, which means that economically and, and in the, for the industry sector, it's easier, let's say, to manufacture and then to operate these kind of systems. The, the main drawback is that the concentration factor is limited to about 100, which means that the temperature, uh, which is uh, uh, reached by these uh, systems is limited also and in practice, it's limited to 400 or 405 and, and 50 degrees. So the, the, the efficiency of the thermodynamic cycle is limited as well. To get a higher efficiency of conversion with the thermodynamic cycle, we need to get higher temperature. And that can be achieved with a higher concentration system, which is provided by focus uh, system. Uh, or point focus system, uh, which are of two families. The dish system, which is a, a parabolic mirror rotating along two axes uh, and pointing to the sun at any time in the day. And this is on the, on the bottom left of the, of the figure. This is very nice. The, the optical efficiency is maximum uh, all day long. Uh, so the conversion, conversion efficiency, the, 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 the sorry, the uh, concentration ratio is very high, uh, about several thousands of suns, and, and the temperature might be very, very high as well. So the conversion efficiency is really very nice. The main drawback is that the, the limitation in size, because we, we, we cannot, of course, rotate uh, uh, mirrors of uh, several hundreds of, 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 of uh, 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 thousands of uh, uh, square meters. So to get a, 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 a higher power, uh, we fix on the, on the ground the mirrors, and then we have this the solar receiver uh, also fixed uh, at the top of a tower, and this is the solar tower system, which is on the bottom right of the, of the, of the figure. Uh, the concentration factor achieved might be several thousands, and the, the temperature is very high, and the efficiency of this system is, 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 is high as well. The industry today is, is, is going into this direction and we have about 25% of the installed capacity commercially uh, operated uh, based on the solar tower systems. Whether uh, 70, 75% is, is parabolic trough systems. Next slide. So the benefit of the thermal energy storage, it's illustrated here on the, on the top left, you can see uh, when, when we, when we uh, operate on sun, uh, there is no guarantee of the power and, and time. So we, we cannot, well, it's exactly like the PV or the wind systems operate without storage. So the benefit is very small and there is no benefit and no competition with the, these, these uh, variable uh, renewable energies. 
by varying the size of the storage and the size of the, of the power cycle, then we can meet diverse needs for power generation. And we can also meet diverse, need, diverse needs for heat uh, uh, production. So this is the big, big benefit of thermal energy storage. Next slide. So the situation today for CSP market worldwide is that we have uh, six gigawatt installed capacity, which is really very, very small compared to PV or to uh, uh, wind uh, power. Uh, it's, it's rising, but very slowly. And in construction, we have only 1.4 gigawatt in construction, which is also very small. So the, the growth rate is, 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 is not very fast and not fast enough, according to, next slide please, according to the uh, International Energy Agency, the scenario for the zero emission to in, in, in 2050 uh, mentions that we need in, in, in 2030, which is 10 years ahead of us, uh, 200 terawatt hours of production by CSP. And today we have only something like 16 uh, terawatt hours produced by the system. So there is a big gap to fill in in between in 10 years only. So for this, we need a big, big growth. Next slide. A big, big growth. Uh, and we're not sure to, 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 to achieve this objective. And, and the remark made by the International Energy Agency is that the, 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 the value of storage for CSP plant should be emphasized in order to attract the, the industry sector and the policy makers for this. Next slide. Uh, the competition with the other renewables is very hard, uh, but today we can see, according to this uh, uh, IRENA uh, paper here, today we can see on the, on the right that the concentrated solar power, the CSP, has reached uh, the same order of magnitude of the uh, uh, generation cost. If we look at the projects today, uh, the auctions are at uh, seven cents per kilowatt hour. And, and this is not far from the uh, photovoltaic or, or wind as well. Uh, and and the, the, the trend of this curve is really a big, big decrease on the, of, the, of the cost. So it's rather optimistic uh, regarding the cost of generation. Next slide. Again, with the cost and again with the IRENA paper, uh, what we can see here, according to the regions, because the CSP cost is very dependent on the, on the site, uh, we can see here that according to the regions, uh, the, the CSP costs are a little bit above the, the cost of the uh, fossil fuel, which is about uh, between eight and, and 12 or 13 uh, cents per kilowatt hours. And, and but, but on the, on the upper, upper part of the graph, we can see that it competes with distributed diesel fired electricity uh, systems. And especially, this is the, the target for the, for the small scale CSP systems. And that's a good news because, well, you, you know that the, well, you know, maybe, maybe not, but the, the, the cost of CSP is very dependent on, on, the, on the size of the system. There is a size effect. So by increasing the size of the system, and going to very, very big power, we can decrease the cost uh, uh, significantly. So on the other hand side, if we reduce the, the size of the system, the small scale, of course, the cost of generation increases, but it still competes with the, the cost of diesel, which is the competitor in, in some remote areas, for example. Next slide. Now, it's exactly the, 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 the the place uh, uh, where polyfem comes, uh, this small scale generation. So remember that polyfem is a uh, uh, European funded project. Uh, the title is small scale solar thermal combined cycle. And the consortium is made of nine entities and the duration is four years and we have extended the project for five months. Next slide. The technology uh, brings uh, uh, a combined cycle made of uh, a micro gas turbine located on the top of the tower, uh, which is directly 
which receive directly the heat produced in the solar receiver at the top of the tower. And then the bottom cycle is a, an organic Rankine cycle. And in between, we have a thermal energy storage system. So we re recover the, the, the exhaust heat from the gas turbine, and then we go to the uh, thermal energy storage system, which is a thermocline tank system, which is a, a low cost system. And then on demand, the organic ranking cycle produces electricity, or we can also produce heat or desalinated, desalted water with the heat uh, stored in the, available in the thermal energy storage system. So the challenges of this project are, various challenges are, are, are addressed. Uh, we need to develop the, the, the hybrid gas uh, turbine system. So this was done and tested. And then we need also to develop and to test and validate the technology for the, for the solar receiver, which works with the pressurized air from the, uh, from the gas uh, cycle. Uh, the same also development and testing of a thermocline thermal storage system using concrete as, let's say, uh, main material. And uh, uh, we, we also need to validate the technology for the uh, heat recovery at the exhaust of the gas turbine. Then we have set various targets here uh, in agreement with, let's say, with the, the targets uh, of the European uh, Union or the European uh, the Commission. Next slide. We are not completely at the end of the project. Uh, we'll soon state that finish the construction and testing and saw the testing of the of the overall prototype plan but we already have achieved some uh, some good results uh, we have we have the complete design of the pressurized air solar receiver and some parts constructed we have designed constructed and tested the micro gas turbine with uh, excellent results we have also selected materials for thermocline storage uh, and we have tested this uh, material in a thermocline storage tank system that's a small scale. Uh, we have done the system modeling and performance assessment. We will have some uh, results by our colleagues from Fraunhofer on this. And, and now we are constructing the prototype plant and soon we'll start the testing of the prototype plant. Next slide. Well, a very short and brief presentation of the design of the pressurized air solar receiver. So it's a cavity receiver, uh, 1.2 square meters. It's a small one a few hundreds of, square of uh, kilowatts uh, installed at the top of the tower. And the, the system is made of uh, modules. Uh, each module uh, uh, is, is, is made of uh, uh, not a sandwich, but a, a, kind, a combination of, of copper, which is very uh, conductive th thermally, and also a protection with the, which is a, a super alloy uh, to protect the copper from oxidation. Uh, and inside this, uh, this module, we have very small tubes of uh, super alloy as well. Uh, and through these tubes, uh, the air flows through these tubes and is heated at very high temperature. One, one side of the modules uh, is exposed to the concentrated solar radiation. On the, on the right of the, of the slide, you can see two, two, two modules uh, fabricated. Next slide. And then the, the next and, and, and last slide is about the design of the testing of the, of the filler bed in the thermocline storage tank. So the, the philosophy of, uh, of polyfem is to use a structured filler bed, uh, which means that the, the material is, is presented in the forms of bricks and the bricks are, are arranged in, uh, in are stacked and arranged in the, in the, in the, in the tank. Uh, and as you can see on the on the picture here, and uh, it's a specific uh, uh, concrete material which has been developed by our partner Araela in Spain, and we have tested this for a few months in our testing facility in France, uh, and we have obtained very nice and good results in terms of uh, heat transfer between the oil thermal oil uh, and the uh, and the bricks. Uh, and in terms of repeatability of the results. And, and this is very comparable to what is observed with other kinds of uh, filler beds in thermocline tanks. Thank you. I think this is the last, yeah. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Alain, for this presentation. Uh, so please do not forget to ask your questions in the chat, and we will uh, answer them uh, at the end of the, of the session. So thanks again, Alain. I will now let the floor to Rocio to present uh, the part about uh, ter thermal energy storage. So the floor is yours. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Okay, so can you see my presentation? Yes. Can you see it moving? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the most important. Okay. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Rocío Bayón from uh, CMAT, from Plataforma Solar de Almería, CMAT. I'm working for the Thermal Storage Unit. So um, I'm going to talk about the thermal storage and how we think that this is a very big uh, treasure that we can have from our CSP plants. But we will see that not only for CSP plants, but in the end for making the, um, let's say the, uh, the electrical mix, the electricity mix, mix based on renewable energies to make this um, reality for, for the future. This future that we really have to, to go towards decarbonization and, um, and renewable energy sources. Okay, so which, which is the commercial thermal storage uh, systems that we have nowadays for CSP plants? So this, um, these storage systems are based in sensible heat. So this is the equation uh, used for this uh, heat or this energy we are able to store. Um, these systems also use um, materials in liquid state. Why? Because the heat transfer is done by convection. Um, <clears throat> also, the materials, the material we use is, has an stability interval that is adequate for the electricity production, which is very important when we are working with CSP plants. Also, the, um, the material has to be non-explosive and environmental friendly. Of course, and also for, for sure has to be cheap and available and also validated. So which is or which are, well, actually which is the material we normally use in commercial CSP plants as storage medium is the, what we call solar salt. Solar salt is, um, is a mixture of uh, nitrates, salts, nitrates, sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate. Of course, um, they are in liquid state. So this is also why we call them molten salts. But it's, in the end, it's always this, uh, commercially, it's always this, this mixture with, with this composition. This, um, this material have um, this storage capacity, this raw CP is quite high. And why it's important that it is quite high? Because it goes in this equation. So the higher this product, the storage capacity, then the, the, the smaller the volume we need for, for, um, for storing heat, for the amount of heat we need, we want to store. And uh, so this is very important. And this value of rho CP density and, and heat capacity is, uh, is high. So this uh, salt mixture also has quite a high thermal stability interval in, from 240 till 600 degrees Celsius. So it goes well for the electricity production because this is temperatures are quite high for, let's say, uh, making a turbine working. 250, the low, is this, this, this low temperature is, is, is not related to stability, but it's low, related to the freezing temperature. So because below this temperature, the mixture of these salts uh, well, these salts can be solid. So we have to be careful with this low temperature um, limit. And of course, this, uh, this mixture is also assessed, was assessed, assessed uh, quite a long time ago by, uh, by NREL the, in the United States, because it was already tested in, the, in an installation that is already dismantled, that is uh, called, was called Solar 2. So this is why the, this mixture is the one used nowadays in commercial CSP plants. So in fact, we have 
two kinds of uh, molten salt storage, config storage configurations depending on uh, the kind of CSP plant we, we have. So we have here an example with um, a plant with a parabolic troughs, okay? And in this kind, we have this indirect storage. Why it is called indirect? Because the heat transfer fluid, which is the fluid going through the solar field and bringing the heat from the solar field to the power block, in this case, uh, is, uh, in, is an oil. And the fluid in which we make the storage, the storage medium is another fluid, which is the, the, the molten salts, but these are different. So this is why the storage is called indirect. In this case, as you can see here in this picture, we, we need the heat exchanger for the heat transfer fluid, the oil and the salts, which are in the storage system. So another kind of, uh, of configuration is what we call direct storage. And this is what we have, for example, in this, in this other picture, which is the case of a tower or the central receiver in which uh, the heat transfer fluid works also as a storage medium in this, guy, in this case. So the heat transfer fluid is already the molten salt or the solar salt. Uh, in this case, we don't need any heat exchanger between the uh, heat transfer fluid and the storage medium. But, um, but in this case, this uh, heat transfer fluid, which are the salts, go always through the storage tanks. If you can see in the picture, they go always through this before it go into the, um, to the, um, to the power block. So how a uh, thermal storage system works, we have here a little example for this uh, in, in direct um, storage system. But okay, when we have a solar irradiation, we use the solar field for charging the thermal storage. And how this works, so you can see here how the, the two tanks, one we have a tank with a cold salt and another tank that at the beginning was empty. So when we charge the storage, we just move the cold salt through the heat exchanger. We heat it up with the heat transfer fluid coming from the solar field and then the heated salt is stored in the uh, hot tank. And you can see that when we charge the hot tank, we empty the, uh, the cold tank. What happens when, when we don't have solar irradiation because it is nighttime or because we have cl um, um, clouds? Okay, in this case, what we have to do is to discharge the thermal storage and we use the heat from the thermal storage to feed with energy the power block. So in this case, what we do is to empty the hot tank and to fill the cold tank and we the heat that we have extracted or is extracted by the heat transfer fluid and brought and it's brought towards the power block and generate electricity. So um, okay, apart from the schemes, we we can see here a couple of pictures of CSP plants with thermal storage we have in Spain. These are two examples. One is the one with parabolic troughs. One is Andasol, there are, I think, three plants in this Andasol. Here you can see two of them. And they are, okay, in the south of Spain. And uh, the interesting thing is that since it is um, indirect uh, storage, the temperatures of operation between the cold and the hot um, tank is only between 293, 393 more or less, so 100 degrees uh, temperature difference between the two tanks. Here, the limit, the maximum limit temperature is due to the stability of the oil going through the, um, through the solar field. In this case, this parabolic trough, uh, this, this and that's all uh, um, plants, they have a 50 megawatts uh, of power, nominal power and storage capacity of 7.5 hours. 
here we have another example also in Spain, which is a tower with a circular solar field. And in this case, um, the uh, um, power is 20 megawatts and the storage capacity is larger, is up to 15 hours. And you can see here the, that the temperature range is higher than here because we have direct storage. So we don't have the limiting temperature of the oil, just the limiting temperature of the stability of the salts. So why I put an example in Spain, because I mean, this is the same map, uh, the same scheme uh, that uh, Alain was showing. And if you have a look to the power installed, would you see that in Spain still, we have the highest amount of megawatts installed all over the world. Okay, then comes a US, then um, Morocco. Morocco is, we have the star because it is not stalled, but it's also uh, the green, which is in development. Uh, main region also uh, wants to install a lot of, um, a lot of uh, power, but still the blue part is the one that is already working. And then China also, this does 1000 megawatts, but only half of it is, is already working. The other one, the other half is still under construction. So <clears throat> it, if we really want to see how uh, CSP plants with the storage work, or if they really uh, work well and as expected we really have to have a look to to Spain. Uh, so here you can see how is the CSP electricity generation in Spain. Um, well these were the milestones in December 2015. Uh, you may say it is quite old but it's not that it's not that old because in the end already in that year we had the 2300 2, megawatt installed that you can see before is is the one that we have now so uh, well no more development since this year we have in in spain okay so just to give you uh give you the numbers we have we have 50 plants more or less under operation uh, most of them of 50 mega megawatts uh, almost a bit less than the half with molten salt storage systems with um, well with a storage capacity from 7.5 till 15 hours of, of uh, with nominal power production from the from the storage and of course all of them are most of them are on this in the south of Spain with there we have most of the solar radiation. Um, here you can just see the production uh, over from 2009 till 2015. You can see the increase of this production, CSP production. Of course, the highest point are in summer. And this is increasing because this, this, was, uh, this reflects that over the years, more and more CSP plants were built, but then here, more or less, we have the similar production over the year as we have now. And as Alan was saying, uh, CSP really allows dispatchability. This is shown in this graph. Why? Because in blue we have, which is the demand curve for electricity, and you can see that uh, thermosolar or CSP is able to really follow this demand curve. Of course, of course, the uh, the scales are not the same, but it's just to illustrate how CSP can really respond to the demand and, and be uh, dispatchable. Uh, well, this is also more or less shows you the electricity generation accum accumulated over a year since 2009. 2009, the beginning of the of the thermal of the CSP plants in Spain. It's also, for, of course, for Spain, you can see the capacity installed was increased and after 2015, the gray one, well, it depended on the years, okay, but this is more or less the production um, accumulated over the whole year. In, two, in 2020, it was already 4.5 uh, gigawatts, so, yeah, and now uh, you see 2021, more, more or less we are going in the same, in the same way. They were years better, better years, but I mean, probably this is due to the irradiation of the year. Um, 
I just wanted also to show you here the, that there is a big difference between photovoltaic and thermosolar, hmm? okay? In terms of electricity generation, also for Spain again. Um, if, for example, we take a summer day, which is this one, at the 2 p.m., uh, 2 p yes, 2 in the morning, so a very night, we can see that the photovoltaic is producing 18 megawatts, which probably, I don't know, it comes maybe from some electrical uh, um, storage. I don't really know. But you can see that really CSP at this time in the night is already producing is already producing um, electricity. Of course, during the day, we have more power installed in photovoltaic, but after the night, we really have more production of CSP. The same can, we can say for, for winter timing. Here is more interesting because PV at already half past nine is not producing almost nothing, but still CSP, uh, see, thermosolar CSP is able to produce, to extend the production over the first hours of the night. So this is the important, the, we can see here the importance of, of having a thermal storage uh, associated in principle to. So, um, as Alan was saying also, one of the goals of the polyfem and also of the CSP plants is to, to look for um, cost reduction in terms for this thermal storage. So, one of the approaches is using one single tank, because when we have two tanks, the question is that one at some point we have one tank empty and one tank full. So the idea of having a thermocline tank is to have two tanks with a fluid at two temperatures. So if we just do that, we could expect a cost reduction in the storage system of, of about 30%. But if on top of it, we just use a solid filler uh, inside the storage tank, we really could achieve a reduction almost of the 70 percent. So all well, this is the good things but the bad things of using uh, or the inconvenience of using thermocline tanks is that uh, the charge uh, during the charge and discharges processes and during the times while the tank is, is waiting for being more charged or more discharged they use this thermocline th uh, thickness increases because the thermocline is the the, the uh, the area or the part of the tank in which we have this temperature uh, transition from the hot part which is on top and the cold part which is below. So this means that if thermocline thickness increases we have a degradation and we have a loss of energy and a loss of uh, efficiency because the available energy at maximum temperature decreases. So which are thermocline challenges we are facing now to manage this degradation of the thermocline, the definition of optimal control strategies for solar thermal power plants with thermocline tanks, and also look for new filler and also wall materials and new fillers with higher storage capacity, a lower price, and also for, for wall materials. Well, just to recall the polyfem approach in relation to the storage tank, to the thermal storage, we are trying to, to develop and to test the tank with thermal oil and concrete, a solid filler. And this concrete is also used for the, uh, for the walls and also for the insulation of the, of the tank. So yes, before ending, yes, to, wanted to mention some that we really have could have other possibilities for the thermal storage in the electricity mix. For example, the implementation of thermal storage systems in CSP plants that already exist, because it's true that in some cases, some plants, as I showed you in Spain, we have kind of more than half of the plants, the CSP plants do not have thermal storage, but we could really implement thermal storage system, which would make them uh, fully uh, dispatchable and also this would help the whole energy electricity mix to be more reliable in relation to, to renewable energies. Also, uh, we could also uh, try to use this uh, 
the time we use this, uh, this thermal storage, we could really optimize it according to the demand and the market. So maybe we should not think that CSP plants should produce electricity from sun during the day and then use or produce electricity during the night from the storage. We really could manage them to make them use the storage only when or to, to not to produce electricity during the day but use them for storing heat for the night for all the rest of the of the um, of the um, <coughs> renewable energies also another approach could be to use thermal storage for uh, storing the excess of electricity what we call carnot batteries so, and this could be done through what we call heat storage power plants or electrothermal storage. And also, for example, implementing thermal storage systems in dismantled coal powered plants. And this is also an idea that is now quite uh, fashionable. So here we have this, this approach from Siminga Mesa, which is already a commercial uh, thing, a commercial reality, in which they use uh, volcanic rock for storing heat by using uh, air up to 700 degrees and, um, and the electricity is generated in a steam turbine. So uh, they just they really keep electricity hitting air and then keeping it in this volcanic rock. So, and their approach in short term goal is to increase uh, the amount of this storage uh, to achieve some gigawatt hour. Okay, this is kind of commercial and also here you can see what we could do with these uh, coal plants that are now this being dismantled uh, at least all over Europe. So we have here the scheme of a power, uh, coal plant with our, uh, with the turbine, uh, wait, sorry, the, um, the heating pot and then the turbine and blah, blah. Then what we can do is to remove this and kind of use the electricity for um, heating uh, for uh, <clears throat> for heating the uh, salts from the cold tank to the hot tank to store heat, convert electricity in thermal energy, and then to recover the thermal energy uh, for uh, uh, driving the, the the turbine. Which this part uh, is already there for this re for this uh, kind of of. Uh, of power plants and then it should be a pity to to not to to take advantage of all this just before this uh, before dismantle everything we can really take advantage maybe of this of these plants so here some some conclusions uh, thermal storage with molten salts is really a commercial technology which is reliable and able to fit the electrical demand they we can achieve really high capacity storage up to 19 hours uh, with the, the power plant working at nominal power nowadays the lifetime estimated for this kind of system is quite quite big between 25 30 years and but in fact these storage systems do not have to be associated to really a csp plant because it can be implemented in other plants that already exist, but also in the smelter coal plants. And also that we have now some new high capacity thermal storage concepts that are already a commercial reality that are not based on molten salts, of course. So thank you for your attention, that's it. Thank you very much. So now we're going to uh, go to the third part of this webinar and see uh, the market opportunities offered by um, small-scale CSP. And this part will be presented by uh, two speakers. First, Peter from Alborg CSP and then Shahab uh, from uh, Fanofer ICE. So Peter, I'll let you the floor. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, hello, my name is Peter Jensen. I'm from Alborg in Denmark. And uh, we have we have taken part in the Polyfame project uh, 
as uh, <clears throat> partners to do the design and engineering of the heat recovery system from the exhaust of the gas turbine as the main part of it. So, uh, <clears throat> but we are doing other things I would like to share with you today, if possible. So, yeah. okay. so yeah, we can see. You just we can have... see everything. Yeah. Okay. So, what I would like to present to you today is a part of our <clears throat> Olbo take on the uh, integration that we also see in the Polyfem project where we can integrate uh, solar energy with uh, storage and uh, electricity and heat production. And our take on the uh, on the technology development is that there is no almighty technology. So we see that it's very good for all technology to work together. And uh, yeah, this is what we do. Hey. Is it better? Yes, it is a it's better, yeah. moment. Great. Thank you. So continuing. Uh, our background is uh, <clears throat> we used to make uh, boilers, steam boilers from uh, from fossil fuel uh, sources like oil and gas and coal and uh, other other dirty, dirty things. But uh, now we saw the light uh, long uh, in 2008 and started to do renewable stuff uh, like the solar towers PS10 and PS20. You see here the boiler part of that was actually designed by us in Aalborg. But through the years, we have been involved in many, many uh, different uh, uh, projects and we have developed a lot of different technologies, both for ourselves, but also for other, from different things like Alain uh, presented with the uh, uh, different solar CSP technologies, parabolic trough and towers. And uh, also we have moved to flat panels, uh, like it's not so concentrated. Uh, but normally our business is always like thermodynamic uh, part of uh, of the energy system. So uh, the latest one we have been uh, we are involved in is the Deva project in uh, in up in Dubai, where we are producing uh, the steam boilers for 1,800 megawatt of steam uh, for driving three steam turbines uh, each 200 megawatt. Uh, so, but I would like to go back and show you a few, uh, uh, at least two other examples where we are, where we from the industrial side can see that there's a use for this, a real use in the, uh, in the industry. And this is an example from Australia where we have done a, a combined heat and power plant where we produce uh, steam and we produce from the sun, CSP tower, we produce electricity and, uh, and heat hot water and we make desalination uh, for to make clean water to to drive tomatoes. Uh, you will see a small film at the end of this uh, presentation but in general what we are doing is that we are producing all the heat and energy and water that is needed to produce 17% uh, of Australia's uh, tomatoes every year. So it's a tomato producing plant. Uh, and you can see there are some pictures. This is a typical tower you see the white tower in the boiler in the top producing steam and the solar field, which is the concentrator, uh, projecting all the energy from the sun up to the single point in the tower, like I explained uh, by Alain. The tanks you see down here, these are two different levels of uh, energy storage. One is a water filled tanks, thermocline tank, which is a 90 degree hot. And the other one, uh, the smaller one is a a 60 degree uh, storage tank. The, the high temperature is using to drive the desalination plant, which is a thermal desalination. And the uh, 60 degree temperature tank is used for heating of the greenhouses uh, during nighttime. And you see in the background, you see Spencer Gulf from where the salt water is taking in uh, for the desalination and the brine is rejected back to the Gulf. Uh, so, and this is a, a, a schematic of the plant. You see the reflectors and you see the boiler, a steam drum at the top of the tower producing steam to the steam turbine. 
steam is uh, exhausted from the steam turbine and recovered as as it condensates as it's condensed uh, the heat is transferred to the big tank uh, 21 million cubic uh, no yes no 21,000 cubic and then uh, we have the desalination plant which is feed, uh, feeding on heat from the storage tank and the heat that is being recovered uh, back to the to heat the greenhouses so this is a very efficient plant that is using almost all of the uh, energy coming from the sun there's no cooling tower there's no uh, the only thing is that the brine is leaving uh, back to the spencer gulf at around 30 to 40 degree uh, so this is very nice uh, energy system. Another example is actually from a CSP plant based in Denmark, where we have a parabolic trough uh, that is heating up oil to 330 degree. And this is a level that is uh, driving an ORC, organic Rankine cycle, which is actually also uh, seen in the polyfame project. So this is very similar to this. And so the sun is there concentrating and with the heating the oil, thermal oil as a heat uh, medium, heat transfer unit. And as a backup, we have a biomass fire boiler. So that is same, instead of a heat storage, there is a storage, which is the wood chips, the wood pellets, they are acting as storage. So if there's no sun, the biomass boiler will go in and operate uh, and take the fluctuations of this. And then this uh, energy is uh, after the electricity is taken out when the OSC is operating, then the heat is all converted into the district heating system from the exhaust uh, heat of the ORC. Or it can also be directly, in case there's no need for electricity, you can take the heat from the thermal oil going through a heat exchange and convert directly to district heating or district cooling for the town. Uh, that is, and there's, uh, a storage uh, also energy storage con connected which is a thermocline tank so actually you can uh, we can shift a little bit you know from the winter to the summer well, from the summer to the winter we can shift a little bit the some of the heat uh, yeah so uh, and here's a picture of this plant uh, with the parabolic trough uh, and you see the background is some chimneys with the uh, biomass uh, boiler and there's a new biomass boiler under construction here in the, in the backside. And here's another picture from the uh, from the Australian project. And now I think I'll try to start this video. It's a three minute little thing. Uh, yes, I hope it will work. But is it very small on your screen? I think it is. Just a minute. Why can't that be bigger? Can you try to click on the the three little buttons? Uh, yeah, here and see if you can. Uh... Hmm. I cannot uh, make it bigger. Maybe if you click on the YouTube. Um, sign. I think then it will be played from YouTube. Oh. Uh, oh, it's much better now. I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> See, now it comes. Wow, this is something. Oh, this is a commercial thing. Sorry about that. Ah. Uh. Integrated energy systems, 
the first industrial scale concentrated solar power technology, enabling clear water horticultural activities in the Australian desert and contributing to the production of 17 million kilograms of sustainable tomatoes a year. This accounts for 60% of Australia's entire tomato market. The way that this system produces and stores its energy has been designed to keep human on maintenance and operational costs in mind. The 23,000 mirrors in the field behind us, which focus on a tower which is 137 metres tall, produces intense heat, which we then use to desalinate the water, which is taken from the Spencer Gold, uh, stored as heat, which is used to heat the greenhouses, and then to run the steam turbine, which produces electricity. The integrated energy system is about creating a transition towards another world, which relies more on renewable than on fossil, because that's going to help the environment. The key here is to lower the cost. The sun delivers more energy to us in an hour than we use in a year from other resources combined. You can almost control to say, wherever there's salt water and a lot of sun, there's a basis for building these kinds of plants. And that's a big part of the problem. So, let's see how we make this stop. Thank you, Peter. Yes, thank you. That was uh, my presentation. Okay. Thank so, you very I much. just uh, see if I can uh, make it stop again. I think it's okay. It stopped now, where is it? Yeah. Okay. And now. Uh, I let the floor to Shahab. Yeah, thank you, Amelia. Um, try to share the screen. And now, here we go. So, um, yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Shahab Rouhani, and I'm uh, from Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems uh, in Germany. Um, we are also part of this uh, interesting um, polyfem project and mainly responsible for designing, simulation, optimization, and assessment of the system. So today I'm going to show you um, <laughs> Um, our tools um, and the simulation model, and also um, the few of the preliminary results of the, of the simulations. Um, so yeah, I will do a short inter introduction um, on our tools, and then I'll talk about the polyfem simulation models and different operation modes and strategies. And then I will show you the component um, optimization, so size of the component, and to, uh, show you some results. So um, one of our main activities in CSP research area is basically to, um, to develop simulation software and other tools to optimize and assess the technologies. So here for um, R&D projects, we develop um, a tool chain um, normally consisting of a, um, of a fast design tool chain where we um, try to have an initial component sizing of the, of the plant based on some, um, some really simple inputs like um, the location, the design, radiation or irradiance and, and, the, and the needed demand profile. Um, later on, in terms of, especially in terms of the solar power system, we have a ray tracer um, tool with which we do the optical modeling, annual optical modeling of the heliostat field um, and, and the receiver itself. Then we have uh, our simulation, in-house simulation tool called Zim CSP for the dynamic system simulation of the whole power plant. Then we have some additional post-processing tools to do the um, uh, financial evaluation and optimization of the, of the system. 
after the optimization, we get again the results um, and change some boundary conditions in order to find the, um, yeah, the best solution for the specific optimization function that we have. So it's an operative, uh, iterative optimization process. Um, so the first tool I told you about is called device, which we use for the initial design of the system. Here you see an example how we um, try to design a heliostat film. For this case, where we have um, area boundaries, um, we use here evolution um, algorithm to fit a solar field um, to this defined area, and then. Um, based on that, we can also produce um, um, produce um, simulation tools with with friendly uh, graphical user interface um, and include this uh, tool chain all all the tool chain, uh, tools that I introduce you into this um, into these simulation tools. So we have also called them CSP, which we use for the system simulation. In this case, you see. Um, um, a system similar to new three um, solar power plant, uh, where it has 70,000 heliostat um, with the thermal capacity of 600 megawatts from the receiver, um, with direct integration of the of the thermal energy storage. We have also uh, the um, plotter in our um, Colsim CSP, where you can see the simulation results um, on time. So in terms of parabolic trough plant, we have also a detailed the solar field model where we can, uh, on the right side, you can see um, an example of a soiling distribution on the solar field where we have a different cleanliness factor for each loop that can go through the uh, solar field model and results into different um, temperature outlet from each loop. And, and a more accurate um, mean temperature out of the solar field. So come back to polyfem system. So as you have seen uh, the, the configuration of the system here, um, again, a simplified schematic of the system. We have the heliostat field here. I don't know if you see my mouse, but let me select the uh, laser point. So we have the heliostat um, field um, designed by the device, uh, the fast um, design tool. Um, we have the gas turbine system here on the top. As, as the top cycle, we have the recovery heat exchanger. Um, and then on the, as bottom cycle, we have the ORC and the thermal energy storage, the certified energy storage. So we have um, different operation modes here. For example, you see the ORC direct operation where um, um, the system is working um, from um, so from the solar radiation, from the heat we get from the receiver, the gas turbine will operate and generate some power. The heat recovery will, will extract the heat from the exhaust um, of the turbine. And then um, we have a oil circuit here at the bottom of the tower um, where the oil will then heat up with the recovery heat exchanger and the ORC will operate and produce some power. Um, we have an operation mode where the ORC is not operating and not producing any electricity, but we are charging um, the storage during the day. And then we have another main operation mode where the top cycle is not operating anymore because it's night or um, the sun is not available, um, but we are discharging the storage and producing electricity through the ORC. Um, so in our study for now, we considered um, two additional location, um, additional to the location where the prototype will be or the demonstration plant will be installed. We chose these two locations um, yeah, based on their good DNI condition, uh, which is much better than where the demonstration plant will be built. So we can compare the LCOE and the performance of the plant but also because of their um, specific locations in terms of Namibia, for example, uh, we chose a um, kind of location where we have a demand profile for domestic usage, but the grid connection is not necessarily available for 
um, for the houses there. So these are, um, this is the demand profile. Um, we kind of consider uh, where we have um, a peak during the day and another peak during the night. And then for the optimization, we look at the LCOE, of course, but we also look at the demand coverage to see how good the polyfilm system can actually um, cover the demand power. Um, so if you remember um, the tool chain I showed you in the first slide, now we adopted that to polyfilm as well. So we have a tool where we um, design the solar field um, and the receiver and the, and, and the power itself. Um, based on the um, geograph, uh, based on the um, location and the uh, design DNI, then we simulate them with Colsum CSP and then evaluate the data um, and calculate the LCO. So, how do we design, or from which point we start designing the plant, can be selected. So, it could be that we start from the gas turbine and say we have um, an available gas turbine with this much of of power and for that gas turbine we need to design a heliostat field and, and a bottom cycle or we can start from the heliostat field and say um, we have this amount of field available and for that available land we want to design a polyfilm plant or we can also start from the ORC so it's quite flexible in the tool. So we ran some simulations um, and, and varied also um, sizes of the components. In this case for Namibia, um, as reference case, we took the um, size of the components from the demonstration plant and then varied them uh, around this um, reference size. So in this case for the receiver, we varied it from minus 5% of capacity to 50% of capacity. And here you see that the, by, by accident here, the, the receiver size that was considered for the demonstration plant gives actually the best um, SCOE value for this location. Um, and the demand coverage, also here you see the coverage gap. So the, the part of the demand that was not covered, um, this is an annual average value. So we have a 20% almost um, that was not covered, which is, like an 80% coverage of the demand, which is quite a good value. Um, so changing the receiver size, as you see here, if we reduce the receiver size by 5%, it affects um, the, energy, the annual energy generated by the system. Um, so the, the LCOE actually increases, but uh, if we increase the, the size of the receiver from the reference size, it doesn't really increase. It increases the annual yield, but really not significantly. But on the other hand, your cost will be increased. So the LCOE will, will increase. That's why this point is, is the minimum actually. So we also did kind of the same thing uh, for the TES, uh, thermal energy storage capacity. We varied it um, within a bigger range from minus 75% to 50%. Um, the effect of varying the size of the storage um, is not necessarily seen on the energy yield, but rather on the on the coverage gap. Because when uh, when you include include the storage, you can actually it makes you um, it it makes it avail, um, possible to shift the power from day to night, which can then help you cover your 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 demand profile, but not necessarily increase your your energy. Um, production because the heat recovery from the top cycle is the, is the same. So in this case, that's why you see by increasing the size of the storage, the cost increases, but um, you can have a better um, demand coverage. So more or less the same results for the other location, Chile. Chile has relatively um, higher um, DNI values compared to Namibia. So that is why one reason why we, the optimum receiver size is 10% higher than Namibia case or than the demonstration reference case, um, simply because you have more um, radiation available and you can harvest more um, energy from your, from your solar food. Um, so in terms of storage, more or less the same story here by increasing the size of the storage, um, you can again manage your um, 
demand profile in a better way, but the cost increases. Interesting is that um, here that the um, the changes from minus seventy five percent of the size of the reference plant to five to minus fifty percent, it the changes is really it's really minor. That is related to the fact that the DNI is higher there, and if you have a very small um, storage. Um, it's basically doesn't affect your um, your heat recovery from the upside. So that brings me to my last slide. Um, so the tool chain ena enables us now to optimally design a system for specific locations um, and specific needs um, of that location in terms of demand profile. The preliminary simulation results showed that the LCOE of the uh, polyfilm project, so the LCOE that was aimed at the beginning of the project can be actually achieved um, for good locations, um, but we still need to work on the cost and reduce the cost. I have to mention that the cost, the component cost that we assumed now to calculate the LCOE, um, they are now, um, of course, the cost of the systems, innovative systems that are still not commercialized and are on RFD phase. So we are working at the moment on a roadmap to reduce the cost um, of a commercial system and are looking also on market opportunities and competitiveness against other renewable energies, for example, PV batteries. Um, so we have heard also from other previous presentations, other applications of the, of the polyfilm, which we'll also, which we'll, we'll also investigate um, in the remaining um, time of the project. We will look at heat production or combined heat and power production with polyfilm system and also desalination um, for specific locations. So thank you for your attention and um, feel free to, um, to ask your question. Thank you, Shahab, for your presentation. Uh, I think we are going to the Q&A session, if you are okay. I saw that uh, Rocio has started to answer them, but uh, let's see if uh, some other speakers had something to add. Uh, I don't know, Alain, if you can see the questions in front of you. Do you want me to read them? Well, I, I saw some questions in the, in the Q&A section, but all the questions had, have been answered already. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there are, there are no, no new questions. Probably you can invite uh, the participants to ask their questions now. It's time. If you want to. So please feel free to write them in the chat. And also for your information, all the presentations and the replay will be available soon on our website. But I will uh, just uh, put uh, on the chat. So I think we have a new question. Uh, let me see. No, oh, it's a uh, well, thank you. We have a question. Uh, will the presentation video be shared? Camelia? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the PowerPoint presentations and the replay of this webinar will be shared uh, on our website. I will just put the website uh, link uh, on the chat for everyone to get access to it. And there's okay. another question. And there is another question about the, the LCOE. Of course, uh, if we compare the, S the LCOE of uh, uh, polyfilm to the LCOE of most uh, large, uh, let's say, utility scale CSP plants. We, well, the polyfilm appears as, as non-competitive at all, but the comparison is not, not fair since uh, polyfilm is a very small scale system. So it cannot be compared to a large, uh, large CSP system. So the, the market is different and the LCOE is, uh, is not in the same range. Uh, Polyfem competes with the LCOE of a diesel engine, for example, and not, not doesn't compete with the other kinds of uh, 
electricity generation systems. And then there is a question about the, the reason why the deployment of CSP is so slow. Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, most probably, uh, Yes, policies, of course, uh, uh, there is an answer on the chat with policies as answer. Of course, policies is very important. Uh, since the, the, the cost is still high, so the policies, public policies, uh, play a, a, a prominent role in the, in the development by, by uh, um, let's say, helping the development. But then the policies must also select the good tools for this. So uh, the approach is with the uh, uh, tariff, uh, specific tariff for electricity might be something helpful, but we saw in Spain that the, the tariff uh, uh, supported the, 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 the growth of the market, but did not really yield to a development of the technologies. So they're, they're all, almost all the plants in Spain are built with the same technology. So this is not the purpose. The purpose is also to bring innovation on the market. So um, the policies based on project targets uh, might be a better, to, a better tool for this, but then we need a strong, uh, strong policy systems. So uh, in Morocco, for example, they are, they, they are on this, uh, this kind of uh, development. They have projects and then call for uh, offers in, uh, in, their, in their projects. And then they select of course the best offers, but with a very specific uh, uh, type of projects. And it works quite well. It seems to be the best tool. But not all the countries act as, uh, as Morocco, for example. So. And there is another reason for the, the, the slow development of CSP. It's a, um, the investment cost is so high, the, the, the financial model plays also a very important role. So we need the, uh, the bank to be, to be uh, 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 to trust the, the, the developers and for this kind of uh, technology, which is still very young and not very well developed. So uh, banks hesitate. So it makes also the system slower. Alain, you have another question? about the LCOs from Serge Yamin. What is the LCO of thermal energy for the produced heat by polyfilm? Uh, not yet. The, the analysis of the LCOE for the uh, production of heat has not been achieved yet. So we cannot answer this question right now. But this is a very good, a very good question, and the comparison will be interesting also with the vacuum solar tubes, for example, as it is suggested in the questions. But the main uh, characteristics, the, the main feature, is that the heat produced by polyfilm uh, is mainly stored, so. Uh, the dispatchability of the heat is the main value. So it might be a little bit more expensive, but if it is uh, uh, distributed uh, under demand, on demand, it brings a very high value for the heat. And maybe one important, um aspect is also the temperature of the of the, your heat that is produced 
So with polyfilm, we can actually go still higher. So the exhaust gas of the turbine has a high temperature, which is probably not achievable with, um, with vacuum tubes. Exactly. The temperature, the temperature at, the, at the exhaust of the turbine uh, reaches uh, 490 degrees, almost 500. And the, in polyfilm, we recover this heat at 320 or 340 degrees with the thermal oil system, which is much higher than the temperature generated in uh, vacuum tubes. Um, Shab, we have also another question for you uh, in the Q&A box, sorry, <laughs> uh, but also the LCOE. Well, probably Allah can also answer that better. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of um, could be if the LCOE could be improved um, as a, as the size of CSP power plant increases, um, yes, of course you can increase the size of your plant and um, and use um, benefits of the economies of scale. But um, as this is meant to be a small scale CSP plant, there is there is a limit. But by increasing the number of installation and the projects, um, of course, the cost will be decreased, the capex will be decreased. And the second part, maybe Allah. Yes. Well, I can I can also bring another argument in this. So, um, of course, if we increase the size, the trend of the cost will 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 decrease. But. Uh, um, there is a limitation inside with the turbine, which can be installed at the top of the tower. So if, if, we're, if we think about a, a, a turbine of uh, several tens of megawatts, for example, which is much better size than polyfem, then uh, we, we, we cannot install the, the turbine at the top of the tower. So we need to, uh, to put the storage at high temperature between the receiver and the turbine because then the, 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 the heat generated in the receiver cannot be uh, uh, brought back to the, to the turbine in the, in the direct integration of the receiver in the, in, this, in the gas cycle as it is in polyfem. In polyfem, the, the, the receiver directly heats the air issued by the compressor of the, of the, 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 the gas turbine. Uh, so the, 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 the receiver must be very close to the turbine itself. And, and if the turbine is, very, is, is bigger or increases in size, then we, we cannot arrange the system like this anymore. So we need a, a, a first, let's say, a separate uh, heat transfer fluid in the receiver and in the gas cycle. And, but the better solution then is to work on a, on a, a very high temperature storage system. CNRS were developing this technology using a um, particle uh, storage system. So hot, hot solid particles are stored uh, like molten salt in, in a tank. And then we have a heat exchanger between particles and the gas turbine. So this, this might be a solution. And regarding the SCOE, uh, SCO, SCO2 cycles, so the supercritical CO2 cycles, it, it's a very good idea, of course. And, and many, many research centers are working in this direction. Because the SCO2 concept is very attractive regarding the cost and efficiency. The, the only issue is that it does not exist commercially. So uh, today, Gas turbine exists, micro gas turbine exists. So it's in, uh, the innovation is a matter of adaptation of these uh, existing components to, to be suited for uh, uh, operation with, with solar energy. With the SCO2 is different. The development on the, on the engine itself is uh, it's a big challenge. And I think the last question to conclude this webinar will be from Bertrand Chanch, 
who's asking in terms of grid stability and base load, is the CSP better than PV? Well, better than PV without storage, of course. CSP with storage is, is much better than PV without storage for, for grid stability. Then the comparison should be done between CSP with storage and PV with storage. Uh, in terms of grid stability, I think it's more or less the same. The advantage of CSP systems is that they provide also rotating uh, uh, speed available. So for the, the stability of the frequency of the speed it's, it, of, the, of the grid, it's much better than, 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 than PV. But this is the only difference. It might be important. If the, if the share of, uh, let's say, renewables on the, on the grid increases and the share of PV increases, there might be some issues with the stability of the frequency. Okay, so I think it's uh, the end of this webinar. I would like to thank the speakers first <laughs> for their time and uh, all this uh, clear presentations that you made. Thank you again. And secondly, I would like to thank the participants who had say, <laughs> uh, still we are a little bit late uh, for this webinar. Uh, I'm just trying to send everybody the different links for uh, subscribing the newsletter or, or social media to keep uh, following us on the latest news of the project. And I hope that uh, everything was clear for everybody. Or if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me and we will try to answer you uh, as soon as possible. So thank you again for everyone for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.